Oh. Wait, I can do this. I know. <laughs> Welcome to Gina Tuesdays. My name is Kevin. I'm not a very good juggler. But I am very good at eating my vitamin C to stay healthy during the winter months because it's getting cold and chilly and vitamin C blocks against illness. So make sure to eat an orange or small tangerine on a regular basis to see to stay healthy. All right, that's my advice. Now let's talk about GMAT stuff. Um, this came in as a question from a student, very good question. Um, she was asking about subject verb, verb agreement in sentence correction questions and how to handle really long complex sentence. How do you, how should you handle um, subject verb agreement in these situations? It's an excellent question, comes up a lot, and so uh, I'm here to help explain it, hopefully make it a little bit easier. So uh, the key really is uh, the strategy is to look at internal punctuation, so commas, semicolons, dashes, um, and then find um, bookends to those to those punctuations. So a comma at the beginning, a comma at the end, that's usually going to signal some sort of unit of meaning in the sentence. If it turns out to be a phrase, eliminate it. If it's modifying something in the sentence, get rid of it. And the goal is to find your main noun and main verb. Once you get there, then it's easy to deal with subject verb agreement. So, I have a question from OG, which we will get to in a second. Um, I just want to handle a sample sentence first. This came from Leo Tolstoy's uh, Anna Karenina. It's a great book. You should read it. Um, and as you can see, it's a very long sentence. Look how long it is. So let's read through. Usually what you have to do is kind of go through once. You can kind of like mentally mark where you think uh, phrases are and it'll, can, you can eliminate them. And then you can go back and actually do it. So I'm going to try to do that as I go. Daria Alexandrovna, okay, here's punctuation, wearing a dressing jacket, the skimpy braids of her once thick and beautiful hair pinned at the back of her head, her face pinched and thin, her big frightened eyes protruding on account of that thinness, was standing before an open dresser taking something out of it. Wow, look at all that, so much. Um, what a better, okay. Okay, this is gonna have to do. Um, so what I can really do here is start to eliminate these chunks. So I can see wearing a dressing jacket is just describing her so I can get rid of it. Uh, the skimpy braids of her once thick and beautiful hair pinned to the back of her head. Again, describing her so I can get rid of that. So I have the comma beginning and ending there. Her face pinched and thin. Okay, again, we're getting descriptions of her. Uh, comma, her big frightened eyes protruding on account of that thinness. Here's my end comma, okay was standing. There is my verb. Daria Alex Drovna was standing. Those are my, that's the main component of this sentence. The rest is just descriptive. It's telling me about this woman. Um, what really matters here is Daria Alex Drovna was standing. Not very interesting, but uh, the rest of it makes it quite interesting. So that's the key, is to find those sort of start and stop points, decide, is this describing something? Um, and if it is, you have a good chance of getting rid of it. So um, let's take a look at an actual GMAT question. Um, this is question number uh, 112 in the official guide to the GMAT, 13th edition, page 692. Um, we're given a long-ish sentence again. Lots of phrases in here as well. And so basically it says construction began, let's put what? Construction of the Coliseum, there we go. Uh, comma, which was, comma, in blank, comma, was completed, so and so, comma, who opened. So a lot of commas in here. What we can do is really eliminate a lot of the stuff that's in between and get it down to just construction began. And then we can see there's actually another main verb here. So 
really its construction began and then we can eliminate everything else and then was completed. By just breaking down the sentence this way, we can see, oh, I need a conjunction here to join my two verbs, my two main verbs in the sentence. So I need an and here, which actually is a great key to getting to the correct answer, which is C, which has and was completed. If you, without even diving into the answer choices, just were able to break down the sentence by eliminating extra phrases, you'd see, oh, I have a verb and another verb that is parallel with construction. I need both my main verbs to be simple past tense, and I need a conjunction to join them. Um, knowing that information will get you right to the answer. It'll save you a lot of time. You don't have to fuss with the other answers. It'll be really easy to see. Any answer choice that doesn't have and in it is not going to work. All right, that is it. I don't have any more else to share with you today. So please subscribe and you'll find out about the next GMAT Tuesday video. Uh, if you need any other GMAT help, head over to gmat.magooch.com. Make sure to eat your citrus, get plenty of vitamin C, and be excellent to the universe. Bye.